Do you know where the first fighting of the Second Seminole War started? Well, if you don't, you're going to find out today. Let's get started. How's it going, everybody? Welcome to Virtual History 360. I'm Mr. Wade, and I am on site here at the site of the Dade Battle or Dade Massacre. Now, as you look behind me, I'm on the walking trail at the state park here, but what you see is the low growth of the palmettos and the pines behind me here. Now, I'll be honest, this is June, okay? The battle that we're gonna talk about took place in December. So, it would look slightly different, but I think you get a good feel for the terrain, okay? But, to get a better idea of what it looked like, Take a look at this video and let me talk about what led up to this. Here we go. After Florida became a U.S. territory in 1822, the slow influx of settlers created increasing friction with the Seminole Indians who had long called the area their home. The Seminole practice of giving refuge to fugitive slaves added to the tension. By the 1830s, this conflict had risen to the boiling point. With the signing of the Treaty of Payne's Landing in 1832, several chiefs agreed to relocation of the Seminole people west of the Mississippi to Indian Territory in present-day Oklahoma, but many Seminoles refused to go. Faced with the prospect of being forced by the federal government to move, Seminoles opposed to the treaty decided to fight for their homes. On December 28, 1835, a column of 107 officers and men under the command of Brevet Major Francis Langhorn Dade was en route from Fort Brooke on Tampa Bay to reinforce the garrison at Fort King in present-day Ocala. About 50 miles short of their destination, they were attacked by 180 Seminole warriors in a pine forest in present-day Bushnell. All but three of the soldiers were killed, while only six warriors fell in the battle. Known at the time as the Dade Massacre, Dade's Battle of 1835 sent shockwaves across the nation. It marked the start of the Second Seminole War, the longest and most costly American Indian War in U.S. history. In 1921, the Florida legislature appropriated funds for the preservation of the battle site as a memorial. Now, that was the recreation of the 20-foot wide road that led from Fort Brooke in Tampa all the way up to Fort King in Ocala. Now, the road was part of a treaty between the Seminole and the United States to make it a military necessity, to make it a shared road. Well, the Seminoles didn't think that was right because they knew that this expedition of about 100 men, 107, 108, depending on if you count the guy that got left behind because he got injured moving a cannon, about that many people was a pretty large force to be moving through the Seminole Nation, which made up, the Seminole Nation was about four million, a little more than four million acres of Central Florida. So when you take a hundred soldiers and you start walking out, hauling a cannon, all the men armed, it's gonna raise suspicions. Well, Alligator and Mechanopy were waiting and following. They shadowed these U.S. soldiers, and as they were walking, they were waiting. They wanted Chief Osceola to come down, but Chief Osceola was dealing with another battle that he wanted revenge on, a certain Indian agent that he was working with that had betrayed him. So Osceola didn't come down here, and Alligator and McCannaby decided that it was time to attack. So about 50 miles away from Ocala, 50 miles away from Fort King, in this spot right here behind me, the Seminoles attacked. Now, I don't know if you saw, but take a look at this picture here. This was a fort that was built, well, fort's a wrong word. This was a wall that they built because what happened is the Seminoles had about 180 warriors with them. They opened up fire, but when the Americans fired their cannon back, the Indians retreated. The Seminole retreated briefly. So the U.S. Army fell back and started felling trees, cutting down trees, and they started stacking the logs to build a defensive wall that they could then defend and fire back. Well, as you can see from that recreation in the picture, they only made it about mm, three logs high. And by the time the Seminoles returned, they're just massacred. That's why it was originally called the Dade Massacre because they were so greatly outnumbered. The first volley of the Seminole took out about half of Dade's men, including Dade himself. And after that, they just wiped them out. But 
That wasn't the end. This was merely the beginning of the Second Seminole War. You see, after this massacre, word got back and the United States Army came in force. About 54 days later, 54 days after this massacre, a, sold, a group of soldiers, a troop of about 1,100 men came out, found the men, gave them full military burials, and that was the beginning of what would be the worst of the Seminole Wars from the Seminoles' point of view. It took about seven years before the Seminoles were eventually either killed or forced to move out. Now, of course, they didn't get rid of all. Some Seminole moved south into the swamps of the Everglades, and there they remained. That's why they are the unconquered, because the United States never officially got rid of them all. But they got rid of a good number of them at the second, during the Second Seminole War. There was a third Seminole War that was a much more brief skirmish, but the Second Seminole War got its start here in what is Bushnell, Florida, the site of Dade Battlefield Park. And that is why I'm here. That's what we're talking about. This is what I tell you guys. History is all around. You just got to look for it. And sometimes you got to take a little hike out into the woods. But it's so worth it when you can stand at the site where something like this happened. So, tell you what. In the comments, let me know if there are any historical sites or battlefields or national or state parks near you. Maybe I'll visit them one day. Leave a comment. Obviously, hit that like button if you like this content so I can keep making more. And if that button is red, let's turn it gray. And if you're not subscribed, go ahead and hit that button for me, okay? And if you want, check out these other videos that you're going to see to the side over here. I have other history videos like this. I have random history. I have U.S. history, world history, civics. You name it. I got it, okay? So, for Virtual History 360, I'm Mr. Wade. I'll see you next time.